the Chiefs are your Super Bowl champions, but where does that put Mahomes in the GOAT category? Like, we thought Brady, like, nobody would catch Brady. Legit, especially when he beat Mahomes. Uh, yeah, that's, that's, that conversation definitely changed. Yeah. We react to all things Super Bowl and also the Morgan Riley cross check on Ridley Greig. Should he have not stop shot it? Sure. But what's stopping him to stop shot it? Yeah. Right? You gave the guy an empty net breakaway. That's on you. And stay tuned for our reaction to soccer potentially adding blue cards to the game. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Beat Here podcast. Before we get started, please like, comment, and subscribe. As always, make sure you guys follow our socials. Link down below in the link tree. And uh, audio listeners, make sure you guys download it wherever you guys listen on and rate it and review it five stars as well. Before we continue, we've done it. 400, 400 subscribers at this moment, 403 subscribers. Um, once again, appreciate it. I think this is our quickest jump from like a hundred span jump since I think the first, since we started. But this one was like, obviously, thanks to you guys for the support. The videos we put out are a little bit different. We're still going to be continuing doing that. But once again, we appreciate you guys. Road to 500 begins. Well, well it began already, but officially yeah. begins now for the podcast viewers. But yeah, your thoughts? Nah, I'm just thanks, thanks, I guess. <laughs> appreciate your guys' support. You know, it gives us good feedback that like the stuff we're putting out is what you guys want to see. So it helps us. Now we could put more of those videos out, aka the Canucks, the OKC video, which reached a thousand views. So thank you for that as well. Yeah, uh, almost a 10K for the first Canucks one. But, you know, we took a little minor break from the shorts, but we're going to bring that back up. So hopefully that helps uh, as well. So yeah, just continue commenting, continue liking it, continue subscribing. We ain't going anywhere. We promise you that. So yeah. Let's get going. Even if you want us to go anywhere, we ain't going. Uh, unless something crazy happens, we ain't going anywhere. I'll, I'll say that much. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, but without further ado, let's just get right into it. Our final NFL-led or NFL-themed pod, f- at least until we get a trade or a free agency sign. On, on, at least free agency, but unless we get major trades. In probably a month. <laughs> but Super Bowl, it's done. Our final game to analyze is over. The Kansas City Chiefs have officially... Are, are officially back-to-back champions. Their road to a three-peat will begin now, essentially. So, yeah, overall, let's talk about the game first. Uh, what our predictions were. Once again, I said the Chiefs would win because of Patrick Mahomes, which ultimately was what happened. I said the Niners because of McCaffrey, which almost happened. <laughs> yeah, so it's not like you were far off. But, yeah, let's just start, start off the... Uh, start, start the Let's start off with the start of the game and let's just go quarter by quarter. Yeah, so... Basically, start of the game, Niners drive, McCaffrey fumbles first. We're like, oh, shit, Chiefs are going to win. Then the defense, the, held defense up. the defense held up, right? Uh, first half, basically, first quarter as well, Niners were the threatening team. It was clearly the first, they were more threatening team. Yeah. First half in general. First three and a half quarters, you could like, say. Uh, the Niners were moving the ball pretty well offensively. They just weren't able to finish their drives, right? A lot of stupid penalties in the first quarter, especially the first two drives. Trent Williams. Trent Williams had a pretty awful game to his standards, in my personal opinion. Uh, yeah, they were moving the ball perfectly fine on that defense, right? Obviously, the Chiefs' defense goes better as be- gets better and better as the game goes on, and it showed because the Niners' offense went a little bit worse as the game went on. But especially in that first quarter, that was a Niners' chance to win this game, to get this win yeah, to make it a blowout basically, Essentially, and they didn't yeah. do that. They didn't finish drive. They could have easily had, they could have easily been up twenty one nothing. Yeah, first McCaffrey three fumbled, Trent Williams penalties, and then yeah, just couldn't complete the drive. Got the touchdown on the third one. Yeah, so. and they couldn't complete the drives. Obviously, that's the w- the first problem. Second was the um, the Kansas City defense once again. Spag put out a master class on defense once again. It gave me a lot of vibes of the Ravens game where both teams' defense kept their teams in it. In this case, I thought the Niners would win this game if they have a better start, which they did, right? I thought that's the key to success because the two playoff games they played before, they were coming from behind. This time, they were ahead by 10 once again, and we'll talk about Mahomes in a second. The thing with... Uh, and then, yeah, Spags kept them in it, right? The difference between Lamar and Mahomes, Mahomes capitalized on that. Again, we'll carry on with that later topic. Lamar couldn't. And yeah, and then on the... But just, just think it was, uh, the, the game was boring for the first three and a half quarters, right? And um, San Francisco, like I said, the first quarter, first half, let's just cap it off here on the San Francisco side of things. 
They everything was going well for them. They just couldn't complete the play. Uh, they couldn't just complete the drive. Couldn't get touchdowns, touchdown. right? You ca- you gotta get touchdowns against Mahomes. And then on the flip, yeah, especially when you have Mahomes rattled. Yeah, yeah, the whole Chiefs sideline rattled. Chris Jones is having team meetings with the defense because, to be fair, the defense wasn't good, right? The defense was not the Chiefs' defense wasn't great in the first half. Well, just, just yeah, being fairly honest, Chiefs as a team other than Harrison Bucker, nobody was good, right? And uh, Travis Kelsey had one. He had all that rattle. Yeah, you had the whole rattle. That was your chance, and they blew it. As simple as that. And you can't do that because knowing a freaking forty-five minute halftime, especially in the Super Bowl, that's enough. A fifteen-minute halftime is enough for Chiefs to turn it around. Forty-five minutes, you let them regroup for that long, and uh, we, the rest is you know history. One thing, though, that may have changed the game a little bit, I'm not saying that was the reason why the Niners ended up losing this game, Dre Greenlaw. Oh, yeah, for that sure. Obviously, running onto the field, celebrating something, and he just ran on and tore his run, Achilles. No, he just running onto the field. Like, no, but he first jumped up because I think something... Or getting pumped up and shit. Yeah, yeah so... <laughs> and then ran onto the field, tore his Achilles. Alter- well, at the time, we didn't know it was a torn Achilles, but it was pretty much common at that point. It's usually a torn Achilles, and it was confirmed this morning. Um, that could have been a factor. I'm not saying that's the factor because Nick Bosa was having the game of his life. Fred Warner was having the game of his life. And like you said, on the Chiefs side of things, let's talk about them in the first half specifically. It was a factor. It, it definitely was a factor. For reason, sure. Reason why? Travis Kelsey woke up because he started targeting the backup linebacker. Yeah. That's the reason why. Mahomes and Kelsey recognized it. They were too smart. Exactly. And that's why the Niners first half. You had Kelsey you almost chances. knocking over Andy Reid in the first half, calling him Bro. abusive, and then you calling Taylor Swift an alcoholic because of that. Bro, but I'm, like, it was there. Like, genuinely, the Niners could have got the Super Bowl done and dusted in the first we'll half. We'll talk about that didn't. in a sec because I'm going to talk about Shanahan after. Yeah, after no, but, like, but I'm just saying, like, we're, we're just finishing off on the Niners. Like, I'm saying this four or five times. They could have got this Super Bowl done exactly. and dusted in the first half. So, second half. Let's, let's just go with there. Um, Mahomes comes in, throws that pick. Probably the worst throw I've seen him do in a long-ass time. Because you can't even blame Travis Kelsey on that because it was nowhere near him at all, right? And in my opinion, I'm like, okay, I, th- I, th- I thought in my head that was the moment where the game it should be over. Right, Mahomes threw that pick. I feel like he's d- kind of out of it. That defense is getting too much to him. But once that's when the Kansas City defense woke up, and I blame Shanahan on this. He went away from the run a little bit, and he started going hero ball in that third quarter. And he never learned his lesson from that 28-3 Super Bowl loss because he was the offensive coordinator that was calling the plays in the su- uh, Super Bowl for the Atlanta Falcons. He had the same 10-point lead. A couple in the fourth of years quarter. Ago. This time was in the fourth. Yeah, that, that one was in the fourth quarter. That one's a little bit worse. So he did not learn his lesson there, and we'll talk about Shanahan's legacy in a bit. But yeah, and then obviously that's where the Chiefs' defense woke up, gave Mahomes possession after possession. But San Francisco's defense held their end of the bargain and kept giving the ball back to Purdy, Brock Purdy, whose name we didn't even mention because it was the Christian McCaffrey show for the most part. You know, Brock Purdy wasn't. Like how the people that are pretty much arguing that he's a game manager won this argument from this game, but I still disagree with that a little bit because he was making plays to Juwan Jennings, who got a touchdown pass and a touchdown catch. The only other guy to do that was Nick Foles, right? And um, uh, who's that guy? Chris Conley caught a couple yeah. as well. George Kittle had the sh- like he had the worst game of his life. I don't know how much of that is on game planning. I don't know how much of that is it was, on him, okay, so and how much of that is on Purdy. K- k- run game Kittle's always gonna be in there. Kittle, Kittle always imp- Kittle's the type of um, tight end that's gonna impact in different ways. Yeah, it's not. Yes, do you want him going for sure? But he's always gonna impact in the run block. Um, Brandon Ayuk had some good receptions. Uh, Debo and Kittle definitely were the quiet ones for sure. Debo also got banged up a little bit in the game. The thing with Brock Purdy is, he looked very comfortable, right? The, the moment was not too big for Brock Purdy. Yeah. But the issue is, he couldn't, he made plays, right? He, he did everything. It was just like, I think in that third quarter specifically, it wasn't just Brock Purdy. It was the whole offense. Just, yeah. They were not on their game, right? And that, that I guess, the halftime, the Chiefs field goal before the possession could have swung things. Um, but before halftime as well, um, could have swung things as well. But the the whole Niners offense did not look good, right? It wasn't just Brock Purdy. Yeah, I know. I'm not blaming yeah. him, but he's going to get the blame a little bit because he's the QB as well. But 
Yeah, so ultimately, it was just like a stalemate game until near the end of that third, I guess, where it kind of started going um, both ways there. Fourth quarter comes, and that's when Mahomes takes over. Travis Kelsey gets going. Near the third quarter, essentially, like you said, he targeted the backup linebacker a lot. He got his yardage. Played like the Travis Kelsey like he did in the Ravens. Instead of starting the game, he finished the game that way. Um, Rushy Rice made some big plays. Noah Gray made some big plays. Chris, not Christian Watson. I forgot. What I don't know what his name is. Justin Watson. Something Watson. Justin Watson. Justin Watson uh, made some big plays. Obviously, Harrison Bucker almost had a field goal blocked. Right, because it was a low field yeah, goal. Yeah, but he got it through. But he got it through, and he hit the big one to at least uh, cap it there. We got to talk about the Niners missed um, extra point because I think that was a huge factor in this. So ultimately, what the Chiefs got going, like I said, Mahomes is Mahomes, and uh, yeah, so they made their plays. But credit to Brock Purdy, credit to Christian McCaffrey, and all those guys, they made plays down. They could have, again, had... T- no, again, then you also got to give credit to Chris Jones for and that D-line. George Karloftis had a great game disrupting the O-line, disrupting uh, Brock Purdy because there were plays where he could have had a touchdown. It's just he was pressured. Chris, he had to throw it up right away. Chris Jones single-handedly saved two touchdowns. Yeah. Single-handedly saved two touchdowns because if Brock Purdy had an extra half a second, he's making those two throws. Yeah. Um, I think once was Juwan Drennings. Where there was one in overtime, which we'll talk about later. I think that was a John Jennings ones. Yeah. And then I think one to Debo. I think it was Debo. Yeah. And there's one in the first half too, I think to IU. So three touchdowns. Yeah. They should have had. They legit, they were in the end zone. And Chris Jones just absolutely destroyed in the, in those plays and uh, proved why that he deserves a contract for sure and proves why that he is the best player in this defense. Yeah. and uh, But credit again, they got credit to the kicker who had to make like two tough kicks. I guess the extra point aside for a second, he, he made the two, what, 50-plus yard field goals, uh, Jake Moody. The extra point, though, was the big issue because what could have happened was instead of being up three, they could have been up four, which put up with the Chiefs. Again, it's Patrick Mahomes. I probably would have not been surprised if he got the touchdown anyways late in that game instead of the field goal. But you gave Patrick Mahomes an, uh, at least a safety blanket of a field goal, you're probably done. Yeah, like Mahomes point. had, like I think, a minute 50 or something with two timeouts just to get like 40 yards yeah where he doesn't have to get like the full 75 exactly so like legit once once he's in that situation we already know he's getting the field goal we know it's a tie game for sure the question is whether the the Niners defense will hold them to a field goal or a touchdown or a game winning touchdown so that that definitely proved costly just because um Purdy and McCaffrey did their job in the fourth quarter of that they answered back to the Mahomes comeback right twice and they put their team in the lead Right, and then credit to Steve Spagnuolo for not letting the, for bringing the pressure, you know, obviously trying to get, and that Chiefs defense getting the ball back to Mahomes as well. Uh, this is where finishing drives became crucial because um, the def- the defense made plays, they stalled out the drives every single time. The Niners did get to the 30-yard line, you know, the Chiefs 30, 20, almost red zone, and uh, that's where the drives always stalled. They got the ball back to Mahomes, and this is basically this. Like, there was no... Is the question was this: Are the Chiefs getting a field goal to send it to overtime, or are the Chiefs getting a game-winning touchdown? Yeah, and, and the fourth quarter. Mahomes honestly he missed Rashid Rice on one of them because he was wide open because he went after Kelsey again. Fair because it's yeah. Travis Kelsey, which is why you saw them bickering at the sideline for a little bit. So he missed a read there, which is fine. Is human at the end of the day. He's gonna make mistakes just because he's Patrick Mahomes doesn't mean he's gonna be able to do. But all yeah, that. so ultimately it went to overtime. Yeah. And, and overtime. So here's the debate now. It was reported that San Francisco 49ers did not really know the overtime rules. Yeah. They took ball first. And, you know, on the broadcast, they were kind of saying, like, okay, maybe it's because their defense was just on the field. Give them a little breather. Maybe put the pressure on them. They didn't know they knew whether San Francisco knew the overtime scenario, rules, whatever. And obviously that comes down to coaching and preparation at the end of the day. You guys were not prepared for that moment. Because maybe it was better to get the ball second because of the new rules. This is the first time the new rules kicked in since that Josh Allen and uh, yeah, this is the first and Patrick Mahomes, uh, uh, not championship game, the divisional game. This was the first, that was like a yeah game of the year almost game of the freaking decade. Yeah, <laughs> uh, this was the first uh, over playoff overtime game since that, and uh, obviously 
do I think it mattered really? I don't think it did just because of the fact that like no matter what happens. So you, supposedly Chris possession. Jones said they would have went for two. In the in the first, if they got a touchdown. So that's what they're assuming. For. Yeah. Niners had the touchdown first. So what do you think is better, going first or going second? In that case, it just depends, right? Because they were there. They could have had the touchdown. They could have. Easily, right? Because right? Joan Jennings was just missed. Who probably could have been an MVP candidate. I'm not saying he would have won it for the Super Bowl. I, like, you know me. I usually like to go, I like to know what... Uh, what you need to get. What you need to get. Yeah. At the minimum, right? So, but in this case, the Niners had a great drive. They made a sick play. They got down the field and ultimately ended up getting a field goal out of this. Because it was like a, it was a short one too this time, and again, once again, you gave Mahomes the ball, and there were moments where you could have stopped. There was a fourth and one, but again, I wasn't like, oh there was yeah, no chance. <laughs> it was like zero, three and one. They stuffed them. Third and one, sorry, fourth and one. I'm like, okay, they're probably gonna get this, and they did. Ultimately, you called it. It was Mahomes' um, play action, uh, or RPO, RPO, sorry, yeah. RPO where he ran it, and then uh, went downfield. Kelsey made big plays. Um, other receivers made big plays. Leading up to a Miko Harmon game winning touchdown uh, to, you know, clinch the Super Bowl. And he didn't even know he won the game because of the new overtime rules, really. Yeah, he said he backed out <laughs> as well. Yeah, so which is fair. But yeah, the thing is this it ultimately comes down to the Niners not finishing the drive because they should have had a touchdown in overtime the way they were moving the ball. They should have had a touchdown in. Uh, so instead of their dumb going up by three, they should have been up by. Um, seven, right? They should have gotten a touchdown on that drive uh, right before uh, Mahomes got the ball to tie it, to send it overtime. They should have got like two more touchdowns in the first half, right? And that that's what it comes down to. But if I were to single out one person to blame, it's Kyle Shanahan. It, yeah. it has to be Kyle Shanahan just because uh, you made the same mistake again, right? You can't get away from McCaffrey. I was just preaching how much, you know, Sneed and McDuffie, best cornerback doing the game. No doubt about it, right? Sneed only allowed, I think, one touchdown all year. And that came in the, the Buffalo game. Yeah. McDuffie, right, he's made incredible plays. We saw in the game, he he had a game uh, uh, swatted Debo Samuel away from a touchdown in the first quarter as well, made more significant plays. Trent McDuffie and LeJay Sneed are not going to make it easy. This is why you, you had the best running back in the game. You had the best weapon to beat the Chiefs defense, and you got away from from that in the third quarter and the third quarter was your best chance to win the game because Mahomes threw the interception Mahomes uh the three and outs just kept on like you weren't wasting any clock yeah you weren't keeping Mahomes off the field yeah right and you were playing with fire basically because Mahomes kept on coming back after three and out three and out three and out even when he was doing his own three and outs eventually a guy like Mahomes is gonna get into rhythm yeah and once he gets to rhythm he only needs two drives to change change the tie of the game and he did that. That's what happened. Yeah, like I said, I thought the pick would have sealed the Kansas City fate. Obviously, it did not give credit to that defense as well. But yeah, no, for me, it, it, Kyle Shanahan, this is now twice as a head coach, third time overall as a play caller, that you've done this. And, you know, the funny thing is on the flip side, Mahomes was down all three Super Bowls that he played. We're down, we're down 10. Like, he was down 10 to the Eagles last year. He was down 10 this year. This one maybe a little bit earlier on. This is the first, first and quarter, And then yeah. 10, down 10 against the Niners then. We could easily be sitting here talking about Mahomes not being able to win the big one. Easily. Yeah. If everything went to the favor of the other team. 100%. Easily. We're not because uh, ultimately he's Patrick Mahomes, and we're going to talk about the dynasty. We're going to talk about the GOAT convo in a second. But Shanahan... I'm not saying he gets fired, right? I don't think oh, he deserves to no get fired. Chance. But again, it's the NFL. We no chance. Not now, not this year. But let's yeah, just no. say he does this again one or two more times. They could be like, okay, we need a guy that just needs to win it at the end. That's all we need. Yeah, no, but, but I'm saying like, I still think you need to. You give him a chance. You always give him a chance. He, oh, 100%. He's gonna do everything. Cause right now, I, I don't know if Vegas still hasn't learned their lesson. The Niners are the favorites right now in Vegas odds to win the next year's Super Bowl, even with all those free agents they have. And like Ken Law, Chase Young, who had a great game, bounce back game. Um, and the, um, Ayuk is uh, a big one. Yeah, so and I don't know the Chiefs have Chris Jones, and we'll talk about that in a second. But yeah, Shanahan, he has to figure out. This is your second time as a head coach. I agree that they should be the favorites coming out of the NFC again, but we thought about the Eagles last year. Not everybody will be able to come back instantly. Right, Dan Campbell said it perfectly. This could have been your last opportunity. However, I don't. 
I'm not going to agree with that because this team is that great. It just depending on what the free agency moves are going to be. Ultimately, at this moment, we're not in, in fact, uh, we're not in, including free agency moves, offseason moves, trades, whatever. The other thing is Brock Purdy. Um, in this case, I'm not bl- again not blaming him. Yeah, yeah. He deserves some blame, but not oh, fully. Yeah. Is that can you win with a guy like that, or do you actually need a superstar? And in my opinion, you can win with Brock Purdy. Oh, he's shown sure. he's shown it. And guess what? He wasn't reliant on Debo, George Kittle. Yes, Christian McCaffrey was reliant upon because you need someone. He's their best weapon. And then Ayuk wasn't really the go. Uh, he was their go-to target guy for sure. But Juwan Jennings is the one that made the big plays. Yeah. Realistically, right? And I'm not sitting here saying Brock Purdy is a bona fide top ten QB like Mahomes is, like Allen is, and okay. Lamar, and all these is, guys. Is Brock Purdy a top, top, top 10 QB? This year, yes, but... Coming in, coming, going into next season, is Brock Purdy a top 10 QB? We got to listen. No. Okay, so Mahomes, Allen, Burrow, Herbert, um, CJ? Do you want to give him the flowers right now, early? CJ's a top 10 QB. Okay. Brock, okay, I don't need a list there. CJ is in. Brock Purdy is 100% in. I I have Brock Purdy out of Dak Prescott. Jalen Hurts, not Jalen Hurts, just because Jalen Hurts actually did something in the playoffs. Yeah, I have him ahead of da- Dak Prescott. Aaron Rodgers. I could have Brock Purdy ahead of Justin Herbert. That was a debate for that. And them. I could have him again ahead of uh, Trevor Lawrence. Those two, those three are debate. He's in that category. Yeah, he's in do- um those four, right? The mentioned yeah, yeah, yeah. Prescott, Lawrence, Herbert, and Purdy. Because at the end of the day, he's in the lower end of the ten. Like five. No, he's in like the bottom. He's like the seven or he's twelve a six range. To 10. Yeah, he's like a he's six a seven or twelve range. Just to say that. No, I'm saying he's ten. Like I'm, no, I'm just saying he's in that yeah. range, though. Is what I'm saying because healthy Kyler is a debate, right? I'm not, I'm not saying based off right now. I'm saying yeah, in general, when we start talking about this again closer to the season, healthy Kyler is going to be a debate. We don't know uh, who's going to emerge out of nowhere once again. So yeah, I'm going to put him in that seven or twelve range, just just to be in the same side. Been this, I've been but the yeah, six no. But my, my point is, he ain't Jimmy Garoppolo. Oh yeah, Jimmy Garoppolo, you ain't making it out of the Packers game. Exactly. So my whole point is like you he's still a guy you could win with. It's not like just because your last Super Bowl win was with Steve Young and before that was with Joe Montana. That ain't the case. Right? I understand Patrick Mahomes, Tom Brady, Peyton Manning, Russell Wilson. But Russell Wilson won it when he was more of a game manager than he was actually an elite okay, quarterback. Realistically, like all these quarterbacks are great quarterbacks. Allen, Lamar Jackson, Purdy, all amazing. Right, they could they could easily all have a Super Bowl, right? Easily, Peyton Manning could have had multiple Super Bowls. Drew Brees could have had multiple. Oh, well, not Drew Brees because he didn't really face Brady. Uh, obviously, Ben Roethlisberger. Um, Joe you're Flacco. getting to my point. Get to that point because I was exactly make that point. we're comparing all these guys to Patrick Mahomes. To Patrick Mahomes, there's only one guy in the NFL. Two guys that be Patrick Mahomes. Huh? There's two guys that be Patrick Mahomes. Yeah, not a, yeah. Um, one is retired. One is Joe Burrow. Yeah. But there's only one guy in the NFL that gets the job done, and that is Patrick Mahomes. Yeah. Yeah, so, like I said, two guys beat Patrick Mahomes. That's Tom Brady. And at the end, of the, day, the other guy didn't do it. Joe Burrow didn't get the job done. He yeah, did not. He didn't he, complete it, but he he, he, didn't com- he beat the guy to get there. He beat the guy, yeah, that, yeah. But he but, didn't complete the but mission. But the thing is, there's one guy. Yeah. There's only one guy he in the NFL. He's undefeated in the Super Bowl right now. Or no, he's not right. Three, he's three and one. Brady he's three and one in the Super Bowl. Yeah. So the, the thing is this. You take Patrick Mahomes away, right? Jalen Hurts has a Super Bowl. Brock Purdy has a Super Bowl. Josh Allen could. Jimmy Garoppolo has a Super Bowl. Jimmy Garoppolo has a Super Bowl. <laughs> like, legit, we're comparing all these guys com- to Patrick Mahomes. And we need to stop doing that because there is no one like him. Yeah. There is the nobody the day, like him. The Niners might get out of the NFC for sure. Like uh, the only go- team that's ahead of them, in my opinion, is just the Eagles right now. Or can compete with them. Yeah, yeah, I'm saying like the only team that's probably sorry, yeah, comp- the same level as them at the moment. I know they had a bad year. I assume they'll get better. Is the Eagles fair? Yeah. AFC said there's a lot of teams, but we really thought Josh Allen could have done it this year. We really thought I did at least. Lamar Jackson could same have done here, it this year. Same here. That's why I'm like. As much as I, I was this close to picking the Niners. I'm like, I really want to pick them. But if it wasn't for the Niners' slow starts in the playoffs, but mainly Patrick Mahomes, I was going to pick the Niners. If not, I'm like, I can't be an idiot. Once again, you said it. I'm going to bet against them. <laughs> I, I did it all three times. Right? Apart from the Dolphins. And here's the thing. CJ Stroud's going to come up, and that team, which is probably a team we're going to make a video on 
sometime down the line in the Houston Texans. We're hoping Indy gets there. We're hoping uh, Justin Herbert could get there with um, with Jim Harbaugh now. You hope that Cincinnati gets there, Lamar gets there, Allen gets there, Tua gets there. But once again, any at this point, and I don't know why Vegas does not have Kansas City as the favorite for next year's Super Bowl. Clearly, they did not learn their lesson because if they want to lose money, people could just bet right now. I, Mahomes, by far and away, has to be the favorite. I don't care because this was his worst team, and look what he's done. And yeah. this is a guy that could potentially get a, you know, a DeAndre Hopkins, for example, out of nowhere. He had no second option. That was elite until Rashi Rice popped off. Yeah. Right. Travis Kelsey was neutralized a lot because of that. And um, up until literally the Ravens game, mainly. I know he got going a little bit in the um, Bills game. Bills up game. Up until the Bills game. But for sure, up until uh, Bills game, I'll give him that. He so, was incredible in the Bills game. Exactly. He got two touchdowns. Okay. But, uh, okay. <laughs> yeah, my bad. But uh, the Bills game onwards is when he re- saw the true value of Travis Kelsey. The regular season, we're like, okay, what's wrong with this guy? Right? So realistically, there's no one that's going to get back Patrick Mahomes. So let's talk about the dynasty and let's talk about his legacy. Let's start, stick with Patrick Mahomes for a second. Is Patrick Mahomes officially, I'm not going to say player because people are going to throw in Jim Brown, Barry Sanders, Deion Sanders, uh, Lawrence Taylor, all these guys. Yeah. Is Patrick Mahomes the second or third best QB? In your opinion, is he second or third best QB? Where of, would you put him? Of all time. Yeah. I I think he surpassed Peyton. I'm sorry. Yeah, I think he is. Yeah, three Super Bowls. Only has Montana two, has four. Two, I, we can't comment on Montana too it's much. Three. It's, he's three right At now. At the minimum, three. He's three. Right? Uh, uh, Talent-wise, he's the best. Oh, yeah, for Talent, sure. Uh, well, like, again, we can't talk about Montana too much. He wins one more Super Bowl. He's probably ahead of Montana, in my opinion, right? He said it himself. He's like, it's going to be tough for him to get past Brady just because he, Brady beat him twice. He needs seven. He needs seven if he wants to be number one. Now, here's the thing. A couple of weeks ago, we were talking about Bill Belichick and that no one is going to do what Belichick and Brady did. Is that a bullshit now after what we just witnessed? Yeah, because you're telling me as what team as we could realistically are you gonna really put your money on beating this uh, Bro, let, Patrick Mahomes led Chiefs? As team? long as Andy Reid is still, um, just coaching. Travis Kelsey said he's going for the three peat now, so exactly. like, he put retirement convos out of the thing. Here's the thing: the thing is this: there could always be a surprise team because for sure the, the AFC, and I get that AFC honestly might be better than it was. When Brady was playing. For sure. Right. And there's so many good and teams. And Mahomes is getting by those teams. And so, so many good, promising young teams that could step up. Exactly. Right? A.K.A. Colts, A.K.A. Texans. Um, the you still have the Burrow-led Bengals. Still you still have, have the Ravens. You're gonna yeah, you still have the top Maybe dogs. the Chargers. And then you still have the, the, the guys Jaguars like maybe as well, too. Bills and um, Dolphins. But my point is, Mahomes got past them two years in a row. Could have been three if he didn't choke in that Bengals game. Uh, that uh, the championship game. He's been in the championship game since ga- day one of his started uh, when he's starting year one full time yeah. year. Well, technically year it's two. so weird. Year two, year two for him, but year one of fully being the number QB one, right? I will not again. This is this team just went. They win next year. He's on four out of seven, right? Is it four out of seven? Yeah, he's three for six right now. Yeah, so I think four out of seven. He's already on, him and Andy Reid are already on pace to destroying what Brady and Belichick did. Now, the difference is well, Brady. Well, not destroying. Ber- uh, matching, they're, they're on track, yeah. But he, the difference is because Brady did win three pretty quick, and then he had to wait a decade and then get the next three with yeah. New England specifically. But the thing is this, like, also, when you're looking at play styles, right, how long does Mahomes really have? I don't think Mahomes has a 20-year career like Brady does. Just because Mahomes' play style is taking hits, taking all that stuff. Yeah. Right? Brady was able to protect himself, obviously. So it's also that's a factor. I'm not saying Mahomes is gonna like have a short career. I'm not saying that at all. Like I'm pretty sure Mahomes could still go for. I'm pretty sure he wants to go for like 15 at least as well. But can he reach that 20 mark as well? We don't know. So maybe he needs to get it done a little bit quicker. The thing is this: for him to surprise. The thing is this: if he lost to anyone other than the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, I'm like, even if he got five Super Bowls, I would regard Mahomes as a goat. Yeah. But the fact that Brady beat you, for me, you need seven. It's unfortunate that Brady we always look, we're gonna look at the numbers because we don't know what the hell happened with Montana and how he won those Super Bowls. Yeah. Right. For example, your Raptors. Twenty years down the line, people are not gonna know that KD and uh, Clay Thompson got injured. 
right? They're going to look at the ring, right? They're going to look at the trophy. And people know that Mahomes' offensive line was decimated. We know that. We could take that into factor if we, if we want to. But we know realistically, they're going to future down the line, they're going to just look at the total number, right? People are not going to know Mahomes. They're not going to care that Mahomes in his first full year as a starter got maybe screwed by the refs as yeah. well. <laughs> and he could have been in the Super Bowl against the Rams and probably won yeah. the first year, right? We could be talking about Mahomes. I'll give, I'm giving Cincinnati credit because that's on Mahomes choking. Mahomes but those two that, yeah. Brady ones, in our eyes, we know that it was because there were some other type of circumstance. Now, the great ones would get it done. I understand that. Don't get me wrong. At the same time, so I agree with you, he needs at least seven to be considered the GOAT. And honestly, the way this team is rolling, and the funny thing is, he's like, the dynasty just started? Man, that's bullshit because your dynasty started the minute you entered the NFL in hindsight now. Oh, yeah, yeah, the dynasty is right? going. You've not, you're you're one of the final four teams always, right? In six straight years, you, you've been in the you final the four. You were the final four. Out of those three, you've been in the final two, right? So he made no, he made four Super Bowls, right? So, uh, yeah. So, so of those, four, four of those, you were the final two. And out three of those, three, you were the last one standing. You are the best team in the NFL. Right? So, yeah, uh, this guy, you know, there's no one that's going to catch in any other sport. I think this is the only guy that's close to the GOAT status of someone else, right? You know, people are going to have the debates about Messi and Ronaldo. I'm putting that to the side. And then you have LeBron Jordan as well. LeBron and Jordan are the only other like, one. No one's catching Gretzky. Anytime, in my anytime soon. As much as as good of a career Crosby had, yeah, I don't. Nobody's think Nobody's catching Gretzky anytime soon, right? Because McDavid still needs to win a cup. <laughs> uh, then no, uh, what's the other sport? Um, whoever's the baseball's baseball. a tough one. To baseball are many goats, right? Um, like we thought Brady, like nobody would catch Brady, legit, especially when he beat Mahomes. Uh, yeah, that's that's that conversation definitely changed. Yeah. Um, he could definitely get caught, and that is a scary times for the AFC especially and the uh, NFL in general. So yeah, um I disagree with Mahomes. Your dynasty has it's well underway. It's not just it hasn't just started. But yeah, that's the Super Bowl. San Francisco, let's see what they do next year. There's one last thing I want to say on San Francisco. Kyle Shanahan might be the pre Andy Reid. Yeah, I was about to say that. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Will this guy get fired and just find his? No, nah, he's not getting fired. He's he's always gonna be head coach. <laughs> yeah, there's no. The only way he gets fired is if he like no shits the bed once or twice like Andy. If, like if he like, he, the only way Kyle Shanahan gets fired is if he does something stupid off the field, or if he like leads the team to like freaking miss the playoffs. There's no way that Shanahan's getting fired. As simple as that. Question for you quickly before we close off the conversation, because right now. We haven't even looked into the off season or anything, which we're, uh, we're we'll not get into a second. Like much, anyways. A L- little bit of the news that we had, but I'm saying like when we sit back here in end of August, beginning of September, week one of the NFL, we're gonna make our predictions. My predictions right now, as long as Mahomes is healthy, they're my Super Bowl pick. I don't give a shit. I'm rooting for them outside of the Colts to get a three P because I want to see history. That's number one. But number two, I'm gonna ask you this question though. Assuming he's healthy, obviously Mahomes mainly, but if Chris Jones doesn't come back. Would you still be like they're still the favorites out of the AFC if Chris Jones does not come back? No. And they don't replace it with someone. No. Him. No. Then no. No. Okay. I'm still. Gotta, I'm still sticking with. Mahomes. You gotta have. You gotta have a guy at the D line. All right. Um, Brady. We already know he had incredible defenses to help. Football is the one you can carry in football, right? Like, there's only so much you can score. We saw yeah. Josh Allen do it. Exactly. We and it didn't work, right? Um, obviously in that divisional game. Right, we've seen so many people just get screwed over by their defenses. We've seen freaking USC. You know, Caleb Williams went incredible. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Your defense allowed forty, and you only scored thirty nine. So, it w- it don't matter. You need exactly. Chris Jones. Chris Jones is. I'm not saying Chris Jones is as important as Mahomes, but Chris Jones is hell of damn important. And like I said this year, I said this in the beginning of the year too, before the season started. You need Mahomes, Kelsey, and Jones on the field. If you don't have that. We already seen them lose against the Lions in the first game. They figured it out. Kelsey got healthy. Jones got signed up. And they won a Super Bowl. Yeah, but I'm still going to ride with Mahomes. That's just me. But yeah, You got to have your three guys, right? Those are your three guys. You can't you can't win if one of those are not playing. It doesn't matter how good Mahomes is. How long does this dynasty last? Until he retires. Okay, so you're saying like he's winning like seven Super Bowls for sure. 
<laughs> you saw, I, you can, you, I'm convinced. Okay. I, I don't see otherwise, so, realistically. Like <laughs> this is now officially the last game, last game we're gonna talk about for several months till September. I wish today was a day off because I was tired as hell because we had a soccer game ourselves. Same, I was. <laughs> but I wake up in the morning too. Yeah, so this is this day should be the long weekend instead of the next weekend. But yeah, now it's the dark days. But you know, we'll it'll lighten back up once the off season starts with the free agency, potential trades, the draft. After that is when it gets dark, dark back in May and June. Mm-hmm. Then it's like we need the NFL back ASAP. Yeah, that's true. But let's uh, move on to the NFL. So awards. before the Super Bowl, we had awards. We had Hall of Fame announcements. We'll start off with the awards. I have a few thoughts. That's why. The um, NFL Walter Payton Man of the Year ultimately ended up going to Cam Hayward. Obviously, one representative from each team gets a nomination. Uh, for example, the Colts had Zaire Franklin. And ultimately, they'll pick one winner, which ended up being Cam Hayward. All right? Nothing against this award. It's just it's literally a humanitarian award and everything yeah, like that. Yeah. So, you want to go reverse order or do you want to start off with the MVP? I want to start off with the MVP. MVP, uh, no surprise, Lamar Jackson. The surprise may be that he wasn't unanimous. Josh Allen ended up getting one vote. I thought maybe McCaffrey would have gotten the vote. Yeah. That was me because I was... Yeah, there's no, there's no debate. There's no debate here. Were you surprised he wasn't unanimous? No. I had a feeling he wasn't going to be. <laughs> okay. Uh, NFL Comeback Player of the Year. Let's just go there. This is the one that has a debate. Ended up being Joe Flacco. Not saying it's not earned, but I'm agreeing with what Joe Flacco says. DeMar Hamlin should get it. I don't care. I'm agreeing with a lot of people that are saying this. The guy almost died. You, you he was literally dead and he had to be revived. Like pretty legit, much. Right. Like if we're talking about comeback, the award is called comeback for the year. He literally came back from the dead. Exactly. <laughs> so you, there's no greater comeback, right? Him and Alex Smith have an incredible story. Like legit, they should like co-name the awards to their, um, you know, all Hamlin needed was one game, and he yeah. got that game. Yes, obviously, there's an argument that did he did he play enough? Yeah, and that's a, that's a fair argument, right? Because I agree with that argument too. But at the same time, you don't know. Uh, the fact that Demar Hamlin didn't get anything is kind of annoying. They should have, like gone some sort of like courage award or something like that. Just something to like you know honor him and like what he was able to do this season, which was incredible, and. Uh, yeah, so that that's probably the one thing that's a little bit annoying. Like, I felt like Hamlet should have go, gone recognition. Type, yeah, right. Maybe like, he did. We didn't watch the award show. Yeah, yeah. but yeah, um, any other year, Flacco easy by far. Oh yeah, <laughs> but for sure. Not this year. Other than the Alex Smith year, and other than this year, obviously. Uh, yeah, but yeah, there's no, there's nothing against Joe Flacco. Yeah, right. Like, is listen, Joe Flacco himself well said it should have been Demar Hamlin. It's well in learned like, before he accepted the award. It's well learned because at the end of the day, you played right. Like, yeah, there's a fair argument against Hamlin that he didn't play much. Yeah, so. Like, isn't, there's nothing against, like, Flacco or winning. But it was just something for... Ha- it was more against, like, Hamlin not winning. That was the issue. All right. No no surprises. NFL Offensive Player of the Year, Christian McCaffrey. Obviously, you could have argued Tyreek Hill. But nope. I think... <laughs> <laughs> they, no, no. Later down the stretch, it, it was clear was that it was McCaffrey. Um, okay, another controversial one. Uh, we'll come back to that in a second. NFL Defensive Rookie of the Year, no surprise, Will Anderson Jr. of the yeah, Houston Texans. I mean, you had Witherspoon had a shout, Carter had a shout, but I I would I would give it to yeah. Anderson as well. NFL Offensive Rookie of the Year, again, not surprising, but some people would have loved Puka Nakua to have it because he actually broke records. But CJ Stroud probably had one of the best rookie years uh, of a quarterback, probably since Andrew Luck, even. Yeah. Right. But again, you could argue if he broke records or not. That's a different debate. Even though Andrew Luck didn't win in his rookie year, it was. Uh, it Robert was Griffin. RG3. Yeah. But yeah, so there's that. So I'm going to bring this back to the coach of the year now. Assistant coach of the year was Jim Schwartz. Coach of the year was Kevin Stefanski. Not taking any way, and I'm not hating on Cleveland here, but how could you have a rookie, two rookie of the years, a team that was projected to give Arizona to have top three, two picks, literally the first two picks, because one of them was Houston. That's how bad people projected Houston to be in the first year. And I'm not even talking about the playoff game. They won their division with a rookie head coach. To me, D'Amico Ryan's got robbed. Okay. I'm saying it. Like, we, we had the argument about the yeah. snub and whatever. whatever. Okay. There, D'Amico it, Ryan's got robbed. It's not a robbery. For me, it's My a vote, D'Amico Ryan's, I would have given the vote to D'Amico Ryan's. Yeah. But what Kevin Safansky had to go through, right? Deshaun Watson was injured. 
he had to legit play. Dorian, he won games with PJ Walker. Yeah. He beat the Niners with PJ Walker. Who does that? No one. I, I Other than that. Kevin Stefanski. I get right? that. He took Joe Flacco off the couch at 40 years old and went on an incredible run. I'm not, I agree with you that D'Amico Ryan should be the coach of the year. My vote is for D'Amico Ryan's. But to say that he got robbed, I don't agree with that just because um, Stefanski if, deserved it as much as he did. It was a, like, I had a clear decision in D'Amico Ryan's, but in the general public view, it was a lot of like a 55 45. It wasn't, it, it wasn't clear cut as you think it is. Um, I just, the not reason why I disagree with this is, is your assistant coach of the year is Jim Schwartz, who arguably had the historic defense as well. D'Amico Ryan had to come in and fix that defense, set a culture, and set up, figure out the offense, which Bobby Slowick deserves a lot of credit. He could argue that he could have won, off, uh, he could have won um, off assistant, assistant coach of the year as well. The reason why I'm saying he got robbed is because literally what I said. You got two rookies who got rookie of the year that you have to instill a culture to a team that was supposed to be a bottom two team that Arizona was supposed to get Caleb Williams and Marvin Harrison Jr. But because of you, you screwed over Arizona. He had to instill a massive, massive culture change after the whole De- Deshaun Watson debacle and after the Bill O'Brien era. That's the reason why I'm saying he got robbed because at least on one side of the ball, you had Jim Schwartz doing what he was doing with that defense, which led so to Miles Garrett to getting defensive So Demetrius had Bobby Slowick, right? Jim Schwartz. But came, again, it was unproven came, though. Came in here. Yeah, it was it unproven, unproven for Jim Schwartz. Clem, Kevin Stefanski at least had a culture in, intact. Would you agree with that? Because he was, he, he was. Did he though? Yes. Like a lot of he was, but he was in their locker room for a while. He had the defense with him for a while. D'Amico was a rookie head coach who literally people thought didn't had no expectations of Houston this year. Yeah, no, but I'm saying robbery is just you're just being disrespectful to Kevin. I'm Stefanski. not being disrespectful. Though. I, I think it is because I'm giving, he's the second guy. Huh? I'm giving him second place. Yeah, no, but it's not a robbery, bro. It was very close. It was genuinely very. I didn't close. think it was close. It I did not ha- think it, it was close. close. I think Kevin Stefanski deserves all the love. Bro, people he, had, he, he was second. I'm people, not saying unanimous. I'm not even saying unanimous. Bro, it, people had Stefanski ahead of D'Amico like, for a lot of the year as well. Right? I, yeah, he but, legit went through four different quarterbacks. CJ Stroud I still was that. incredible. I right? get that. And that but that, one guy that, literally led him to a division title. If it wasn't the division title, I 100% same, agree with it, you. It was the same record. They had the same record. And I get that. They had the same record. But, one had a tougher division. Okay, yeah. one, I, that's a fair argument. One, one had four different quarterbacks. People in midseason saying that the Cleveland Browns are finished because they legit have no. Everyone's injured. That's fine. We'll we'll agree to disagree, but I I, I it's think it's not D'Amico, a robbery. I think D'Amico got it, robbed. It's not a robbery. I think he got robbed. I think he had to go through a lot more. Did Did D'Amico deserve to win? Yes. I I'm voting D'Amico Ryan's. I thought D'Amico should have won. If I were to pick one, I would have picked D'Amico Ryan's. But it's not a robbery. What's your definition of a robbery? Huh? Like a freaking... Because uh, I didn't say it's unanimous. It's outrageous. Just like, it has to be outrageous for me. For me, it like, was like... Uh, what was it? Like, um, I don't know. I'm trying to think of... I'm trying to think of an example here. But I can't really think. I'm trying to... Uh, what was like it? Like, for what me, it it's a 40... Like, it was a 50 votes. For me, it was like a, at least a 40-10. That's me. Yeah, I didn't think that. There's no way. I, I need. No I don't way. know what the total votes are. If I seen the votes, but yeah, it I, was way more of a. It was like a thirty twenty. Could have been like a freaking twenty eight twenty two type of thing, right? It was. It was. It wasn't a forty ten. There was no chance. It was a forty ten. Okay. Well, we'll agree to disagree. I, yeah. I, I. I genuinely wholeheartedly believe a robbery is like legit. Question: If it was Shane Steichen, well, how would you have felt? <laughs> I would have felt. Obviously, I would take the bias aside. I would have said the same thing. Okay. I would have said the same thing. Obviously, with bias, you would have joked around. Oh, yeah, for sure. But, like, a robbery is, like, um, if uh, Christian McCaffrey didn't win Offensive Player of the Year. Okay. That's a robbery. Even though, what, the Tyreek year? Yeah, no, but, like, it was clear that McCaffrey had the better year from week one all the way to week 17. Okay. Because he didn't play week 18. We'll agree to disagree. We'll let you guys comment and settle that debate below. But Defensive Player of the Year... People thought it was a little bit of a debate. They were not happy with this. This, was, this was probably the closest one. So here's the debate. It's Miles Garrett. And at the beginning of the year, we thought it was Miles Garrett halfway through. Lock. But people say this is more of a stats award, which I slightly disagree. 
because they're saying that TJ Watt should have gotten it. And I'm not saying TJ Watt's not a game wrecker, right? I don't know who it was. Someone said that TJ Watt's a guy. You'll get the sacks. He, he's a game wrecker for sure. But Miles Garrett scares you. <laughs> like, he literally scares you. And I'm not saying TJ Watt did not deserve it. This one is like, it was close as it could it, get. It was close. Bro, I'm telling you this right now. I know it doesn't, like, this is going to be like a stupid reason. But what I've seen from that Colts Browns game and what Miles Garrett did that game, from that point on, I'm like, there's no other player for me that's going to win deep play. Miles Garrett was my lock from that that point on. And I think that was like week seven, week eight. Right? Legit, Miles Garrett took over that game. He took over that game. A defensive player took over yeah. the game. No, for sure. Like, again, that's a little bit of the bias because we are Colts fans, so that's the game we paid attention to. And also, like, Miles Garrett was healthier than TJ Watt, right? TJ Watt missed some games too, right? He that's missed the fact that that's the fact that TJ got still that many sacks. Is it's incredible, insane. yeah. Don't get me wrong. Uh, am I saying it's like like it's like the Stefanski D'Amico Ryan's thing? Okay, uh, you for you for you. It's, it's like the Stefanski <laughs> for D'Amico you. Ryan's that's thing. the case. Is that that's what it is? Um, no, for me, um, I'm fine with it. I have no issues. I I, I would have had no issues if TJ won it. I w- I wanted Miles Gear to get one at least. He got one finally. And, um, yeah, like, I have no issues. I think Miles Garrett is this, like, you look at the guy, you're scared. Like, like how he's built. Again, both of them are Bro, game this records. this dude could, like, freaking dunk a basketball. Like, exactly. Nothing. Like, like, watching this guy playing basketball. Yeah. Right, in the offseason, I'm, I'm scared <laughs> as well. But, yeah, um, there's no discredit. I, I would have given it to Miles Garrett still. Yeah. There's no discredit to TJ Watt. If TJ Watt won, would I be pissed? No, I wouldn't be. Like, how I'm not pissed off that Stefanski isn't. It won the thing. But... I personally would have gave my vote to Miles Garrett. Okay, let's move on. Uh, Jim Schwartz is the last one. I, I, I said Mike Donald. I think you said uh, Jim Schwartz. But yeah. anyway, I, 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 I think I saw Bobby Slowick. Slowick was in there too. But yeah, so that one I was fine with anything. Yeah, yeah that one's sure. not a big deal to me. But moving on, Hall of Fame has been announced as well. So the class of 2024, former Colt, Dwight Freeney, Chicago Bear, Dev- Devin Hester, Houston Texan, Andre Johnson, Julius Peppers from Carolina. Yeah, I think so. And then Patrick Willis or the players, which means once again, Colts legend Reggie Wayne, fifth year in a row has been, I don't know, I'm not going to say robbed, mm. but you could say robbed <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> he was snobbed. <laughs> it's so getting to the over. era now that like the players we know are going to know, we're going to know these players more likely. Oh yeah, for sure. Like, but I didn't really watch, obviously that was, that was probably a little bit more. Yeah, before NBA I for football. sure is that time now. Yeah, yeah. For us. NBA for sure is but that yeah, time. Congratulations to all these guys. I can't say too much. Obviously, I think Dwight Freeney deserved it. Being biased, obviously, Andre Johnson. But I think that people are saying that he should have been. I think he was first ballot. So that's I think that was the issue people had, as well. So that's that's the thing. But speaking of next year's potential, um, uh, first time candidates. It includes Eli Manning. It includes Luke Keekley, Marshall Yanda, Earl Thomas, Adam Vinatieri, Joe Staley, Marshawn Lynch, Clay Matthews, Travis Frederick, Cameron Wake, Terrell Suggs, Akib Talib, Demarius Thomas. Uh, I remember Antoine Batea from the Colts? Yeah. Him. CJ Anderson running back, which I don't think he'll get in, but J. I. J. I. Like these are the ones that are like eligible. Yeah, first that's time. crazy. Um, um, who's the who's the in your opinion? Do you think Eli Manning's first ballot? I think he does get it because he got two Super Bowls and he beat the goat. <laughs> he beat like the guy. It's such a thing because like, they're saying that he, as a player he probably shouldn't get it with like, yeah, but, like but then he got the r- he, jewelry for he, it. He has accomplishments. He has accolades for sure. Um. For me, Adam Vinatieri is a lock, right? Oh, yeah, for sure. Vinatieri has to be a lock. I, like, honestly, I think Adam Vinatieri is more of a lock than Eli Manning. Luke Keekly? I think he could sneak in, for sure. Because Luke Keekly, at the end of the day, when he was playing, he was the best linebacker in the game. Yeah, so... But again, shortened career, right? That's yeah, short thing. career, that's the only thing. That's the only issue with him. He did at least have a Super Bowl appearance, which unfortunately they lost. Yeah, for me, if I'm going to pick first ballot... It's Vinatieri for sure. It's Vinatieri and Eli. Marshall Yanda is an old lineman though. <laughs> like how good yeah. he was. Um, yeah, I think Eli... Uh, I'll go with those three for sure. Travis Frederick was really... 
good. Good as well. <laughs> Sorry, I had, I had a message pop up on my phone. That's why I, had, I was reading it. But yeah, but uh, this is like that. All these names I named, like Demetrius Thomas, could just get in. Bec- unfortunately, because he passed away, could be just like an honorary member off the bat, right? And he's won one. He's won one. And he's won one as well. He's won a Super Bowl. But yeah, yeah, Eli is just like you beat Tom Brady. I think it was like if you beat like. Even if it'd be Peyton Manning, I think he would have gone. <laughs> <laughs> That's a different story, bro. <laughs> so you're beating your own brother. <laughs> yeah, legit. I mean, he's done done the freaking pro ball anyways. But yeah, so let's move on to finish off the NFL um, news. So news. we got some news Um, off the bat, some off season. Let's go. We're in off season. We're on draft watch. Uh, We're not going to talk about the draft, obviously, right now. That's still like two and a half months away. But two big news that popped up over the weekend. Number one, Hassan Reddick is... Agent is has been told he could look for a trade. First of all, how surprised are you? I think it's just contract based. Oh yeah, and yeah. how much of a game record he's been, and how good he's been on that Philadelphia d- defense. Thing is this, I'm surprised just because he's been so good. I'm not surprised because they've drafted so well, and they have so much depth in that D line position, right? Yeah. Like you have a uh, Nolan Smith, you have Jalen Carter, you have Jordan Davis, you have Fletcher Cox, you have. Um, guys like Josh him. Sweat, you have like all those guys Nicole on the D line. <laughs> He's a linebacker, I yeah. Think, more, yeah, yeah, I know he is. Yeah. I'm just saying defense in general. I'm just saying D line, yeah, yeah. So, like, there's a well, lot. Fletcher of Cox might be gone. I think Graham could be gone too, like retirement wise. Well, that's true too, yeah. But yeah, it depends. Yeah, it's a that's a little bit. Uh, but they have a lot of depth in the D line. Exactly. Yeah, but I'm surprised, right? Like at the end of the day, I think Son Reddick has been their best one. Though. Yeah, that's for sure. We're, we're I think I first saw him, was it with the Cardinals? Yeah, he had like five yeah. sacks in the game. The year that they made the playoffs. Yeah. Um, Yeah, so that's the one news. The other news, this is where we're going to get to slightly talk about it. We'll talk about it more later because this is going to be the biggest story of the offseason. What's going to happen to the number one overall pick? So the Chicago Bears said it's going to take them a haul to get out of the number one pick. So everybody assumes it's one of the quarterbacks, most likely Caleb Williams, but it, whoever they deem to be QB1, right? But this is this is the other part. You would assume they would trade Justin Fields. They're saying that Adam Schefter is saying that they would not be surprised if they keep Justin Fields on board. How much of a mistake would that be? And uh, do you see that happening? A uh, mistake in the sense of value, right, is for sure. Like, would I hate them having Caleb Williams and Justin Fields on the same roster? No, I wouldn't hate it. But Fields value is at the its peak, right? He's been incredible in this last second half of the year, right? You ain't getting anything. Whatever you can get for Fields, it will be at the highest value at this moment in time, right? The moment you say he is your quarterback, backup quarterback, his value is going to drop. That's the only issue. If, if Fields is like steady the whole year, you know, whatever, I wouldn't have hated the idea just because, you know, you have a safety blanket, whatever. I but the thing is this, bro, he's been incredible. That's the issue. Right, that 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 who field? Yeah, to yeah to finish off the season. Yeah, yeah, he's been incredible. Yeah, yeah. Right, and he's Fields has shown us so much potential that he could be a starting quarterback. You trade so him. You trade him. You trade You him. have to trade him. I I I get your point. Like, it's a different story. If it was like a Kenny pick, I it, feel like, like you're gonna like more you're steady. gonna waste both of theirs value in a different in a sense. That's the thing. Whether the value will be wasted. Yeah. If Fields so, was like Kenny Pickett. Yeah. You keep speaking him. of Kenny Pickett. Tallin's a fan, right? Like I said, when this new, uh, when they, we found out that they were going to be the number one pick, two names teams that came off to the head, t- came, two team names that came to the top of our head was Atlanta Falcons, which I feel like makes sense because it's a homecoming for him, I believe, and obviously the Pittsburgh Steelers. I think another team was the Raiders, we said, or or the Broncos, like those the ones down there in the south, or uh, sorry, the uh, AFC North. But yeah, I, you trade them. I, I don't care. Yeah, like the thing is this. His value is just so high right now. Yeah. And it's not going to be as high. The moment exactly. you announce he's a backup quarterback. Yeah. Or um, he could potentially I will hate back. it. I, see, I get your point. You want it, From the Bears' perspective, you won't hate it. But from the players' perspective, I hate it. Oh, yeah. Because you, you, you're not going to give either of them proper development That's true as too. well. The thing is this, bro. I'm telling you. like, If Fields played the whole year like how he started, he went to, he would be the backup quarterback next year. But in two years in a row, he's shown that he could be a guy, right? That could be, you know, worthwhile to take a shot on. And uh, for teams that are desperate looking for a quarterbacks, aka the Atlanta Falcons and uh, the Pittsburgh Steelers potentially too, they're gonna they're gonna pay, right? 
Like Washington paid for Carson Wentz, we paid for Carson Wentz, right? No, Pe- I'll he- give you the perfect example. Uh, Rand played for Stafford. No, as well too. Josh Rosen got traded for a second, I believe. The year that, they got Kyler. Josh Rosen got traded for a second. And he didn't even play on draft day, I think. Yeah, and he didn't. Or yeah. So you're telling me Fields cannot fetch you at least second or a th- um, even a third? Well, Fields and there's more of a bidding war for him than it was for, will be for Oh, yeah, for Rosen. sure. That's the thing, too. Right? So, in my opinion, you trade him. Trade him as, either you trade him or you trade the number one pick. As His value is just too high. You can't yeah. avoid that, right? Now, is the team th- that's trying to get the number one overall pick makes sense is Washington because, like I said, the Cliff Kingsbury links to Caleb Williams. So, we'll see how that goes. So, it's look, but as of right now, it has to be a haul, which I agree with because as good as CJ Stroud has been, but at the time of the draft, his value wasn't as Caleb Williams Caleb Williams' value is right now, right? Yeah. And I would agree with that. They would, it would need to take a haul, which means at the moment, it looks like Justin Fields will probably be a Falcon, in my opinion, by the end of this. Yeah. And, and we'll talk about this more. as, as Yeah, so we'll, as more off-season on. talk will uh, a couple depend of, on you. One thing I just saw, Bill Belichick is already being contacted by owners for 2025, which is hilarious. <laughs> <That's crazy. laughs> so I think because I think people told Arthur Blank like the uh, the front office told Arthur Blank not to trade for him, uh, not to get him. Sorry, yeah, like, go get uh, Raheem Morris, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, on the flip side, let's see. Like I said, very last thing I'm gonna say. I think Dennis Allen gets fired and Vrabel will end up being the coach midseason. That's yeah, how I'm gonna most, end it off at. Yeah. Uh, okay, let's move on. Speaking uh, NBA, we're not gonna. Okay, all, it is All Star break in a couple of days. We'll talk about our predictions of the three point contest. Don contest and all that next episode. So we have the participants. We'll keep that as a surprise for right now. We'll save but I'm sure you guys could Google it as well. So you guys go look at that. It is the all-star. But a couple of things that happened. One, very, very sentimental for us as big fans of this guy right here, Kobe Bryant. Uh, audio listeners, I just pointed out the Mamba Mentality book that we have on, on our... Um, I don't know what this is. Like on our table. On a <laughs> dresser type. Not a dresser. That's not a dresser. On a... What the hell is <laughs> On like a shelf. It's I guess like a so. coffee table. Shelf type thing. Not a thing. coffee table. Like a shelf. Or whatever it is. Um, But yeah, it's uh, Kobe Bryant. One of three statues has been announced. It was obviously announced specifically February 8, 2024. Number two because of Gianna Bryant. Number eight and 24 because of Kobe Bryant. And Vanessa Bryant, again, every time that woman is on a public setting giving a speech... Get talking about her husband and daughter, huge props. It's always emotional. Hall of Fame, the f- memorial. Now this had the best quote. Like if you don't like this pose, tough shit. Because it was Kobe who wanted this pose. So number eight, number twenty-four, and one with Gigi Bryant will be at Staples Center. The one that has been announced is the number eight, and it's the one that he pointed in the air after he got eighty-one against your Toronto Raptors. Um. So that has been announced. That has been unveiled. It's at Staples Center. So if you are happen to be in California watching this and you guys are living under a rock for some reason, go to Staples or Crypto.com Arena and check out the Kobe Bryant statue. Statue. I don't know when the other two will be announced So and what they look like. It was probably will be throughout the year, maybe specific date matchings. Yeah, they yeah. will do something. Emotional day for sure. I was watching it once again. Always going to be watery-eyed, I guess, the best way I could put it. I wasn't really like... No, I didn't have tears out. But when I finally w- got the chance to watch the unveiling and all that, again, great speeches by everyone. Derek Fisher, Stu Lance, um, Vanessa Bryant, um, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, Phil Jackson was just roasting Jalen Rose the whole time. <laughs> and um, I think that's it. I'm... F- Scared of forgetting someone. Uh, Derek Fisher was there. A lot of people were there. Obviously, Dwayne Wade was there. So, yeah. Um, legends never die, like we said. Uh, once a legend, always a legend. And like Kobe says, leave the game better than you found it. And once you do leave, um, leave a legend. And he did that. Yeah. So, four years, uh, like we said, for that tragedy. And, yeah. So, let's see what the next one looks like. I'm excited. Hopefully, we get the chance to go. To yeah, Kato. excited to see that 24 one. Yeah, because that's the, the one that you grew up on. That's the one. I, that's I, the, the one I feel I like, okay, on, yeah. if you're going to do a prediction, um, the 24 one, because we know the GG one might be just um, dumb sitting courtside, or not courtside, but maybe some, a picture they have. But the 24 one, do you feel? Do you believe it will be the championship? Um, I think it's you have a, this screensaver where he's standing like this, mm. celebrating on top of the um, table. Yeah. Or do you think it's a 60-point game? It's, a, I, I, it's one of those two. I think the one, the cooler pose would be the, the, the one on the table. Or the t- table, yeah. Yeah. So if if they're going for the cooler pose, 
it's gonna be that one if they're going i think if it's more of the memorable type of thing because he has won five so like it's not like he's one if a different story if he's only won one yeah right he's won five it has to be a 60.1 if they're trying to go for something more memorable yeah i think the 60.1 is more memorable just because dude was legit on his last game yeah <laughs> and we thought he was finished but he's like nah i'm i'm dropping 60. exactly so yeah once again rest on peace to a legend um still thinking about you uh let's move on uh, a couple of signings we're officially in the buyout market era nba trade deadline has passed make sure you guys watch that video of uh, our reactions to all the trades that happened obviously a little bit of a letdown but we still had volume of trades which was great but i think the top two candidates probably have i don't know what the ranking was but the top one for sure the top two have been signed so first one speaking of the lakers spencer dinwiddie officially chose the lakers over the mavericks and um is now a member of the los angeles lakers should be playing his game later on today because it is tuesday uh as a laker fan i guess my thoughts yeah go, uh, he was the best guy to get i understand you look you're looking at the numbers he's the worst field goal percentage of the league right now based on on uh, minutes played um uh, certain certain minimum minutes played threshold but again he's gonna be playing on a better team he will be the guy off the bench hopefully that helps a shot creator a playmaker uh mid-range specialist for me, can we get a three-point shooter is the thing. we have to Now we have to wave someone to get someone. And I don't know if that will be, you know, Seth Curry. But Seth Curry is playing in his hometown. Playing where, where Del Curry is. I completely forgot Charlotte was where Del Curry made his name. Yeah. And he's wearing number 30 in Charlotte. And Del Curry was commentating in that game as well. So it was such a good family um, moment for him. But no, going back to the Lakers side of things. Yeah, hopefully they just get on rolling. Like I said, it's on the coaching side of things for me. The defense has picked up a lot. Can they can get either a three-point shooter or just a lockdown defender? That's who I think they should get. Simple as that. The second guy off the list is Kyle Lowry. He has gone to his hometown of West Philadelphia. North. <laughs> or North Philly, yeah. He's North Philly. West was, Philadelphia as well from Fresh yeah, Friends. Yeah, yeah. I was thinking Fresh <laughs> Friends. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, North, North Philly. Philly. North Philly's finest is in Philly. Not and a surprise. We literally no, thought that yeah, was no, a spot. It, it was a perfect spot. Um, experienced. He could still, you know, play make well. He could still defend well. Obviously, shooting is up and down just because he is old. But, you know, you can bring the leadership factor in. You already added Buddy Heald. But the thing is, again, the the biggest question mark is Joel Embiid's health, right? Oh, yeah. They're if they don't get him back, they did get a good win today against the Cavs, that who are on a heater themselves. So that's good. I was listening to I guess number what's it called? Numbers on the board. Numbers on the board. Yeah. Um. Obviously, our biggest loser was the Chicago Bulls, but if you're that was the team that was gonna get anyone from that team, Demar Drozen would have fit perfectly there because of this injury. Yeah. Because DeMar DeRozan ain't going to help you win a championship. Um, and in my opinion, like, he's not going to raise someone's ceiling unless oh. he's joining, like, a stacked team. Yeah. But f- a floor raiser, which means that, you know, now that they don't have Embiid, without DeRozan, you could see them plummeting down, right? A lot of... I can, at least. Oh, yeah, for right? sure. Right? I, I at think least with DeRozan, he's such a good regular season player, and you bring in a buddy heel to help space the flooring. And even when Embiid comes back, you still got the spacing with... Um, Healed and with Maxi. Healed, right? And Maxi, you got you could have had DeMar DeRozan for the time being, raise the floor, keep a top five seed. Keep lock, a level. Keep a keep level. Keep a top level headed. Yeah. And then maybe if MB does come back, even if he's eighty percent, you still have a bucket getter in DeRozan. Now we all know DeRozan's woes in the playoffs. He ain't a defensive guy. He is a mid mid um uh mid rage specialist. Mid rage specialist. Yeah, thank you. So that's the different side of things, but at least for now, the time being on the last year of his contract, he could have kept you afloat. But again, um, you guys could listen to King of the Fourth Quarter because uh, he's laid it out perfectly. The Chicago Bulls are the biggest losers because they didn't. They think that they're really good for some reason, keeping Caruso untouchable. Yeah. But yeah, um, a couple of other names right now. Marcus Morris, I think, based on the Pat Bev pod, because obviously that has links, is uh, is the guy, team on the screen, uh, Minnesota. He might be he might be heading there. It's not official, nothing yet. So we'll keep an eye out on that one. I think he's the next best guy available. Yeah, Marcus Morris, Davis Bertans for shooting. You have Seth Curry, depending on how if he, he does. Wants to do yeah, it. but I still think he should get bought out. Uh, so yeah, there's definitely one, still a few options. Speaking of Seth Curry, one team we didn't mention in our winners, I think we have to give him credit, is the Charlotte Hornets, because I completely forgot they made the Terry Rozier trade as well. 
Obviously, they made the Gordon Hayward trade. They made the P.J. Washington trade. Got first round picks out of that. So for me, that's a, and they got um, Aaron Wiggins. No, sorry, Trey Mann. They got Trey, Trey Mann. Mann. So they picked a direction finally, and I completely forgot to shout this guy out, Brandon Miller. I said Lamella Ball last time. I forgot to mention Brandon Miller. He's been playing. If it wasn't for Wemby, he he could arguably. Well, he is top three. He is top three. Ch- Ch- will be Wait, there. there's there's a there's a four. We already know who the four are. Yeah. Right. And he put his name up there. Yeah. And he's showing why he there was, was the second overall pick. There was three. Yeah. Right with Hame Hawkins and yeah. you have Chet and Wemby. Brandon Miller is added to that list. Yeah. Now, so Brandon so Miller's added. He's made showing it to a why he's a second uh round a second overall pick instead of Scoot. Like many people thought they should have taken Scoot. But yeah, so shout out. That future looks bright. They picked a direction. Let's see if Lamelo could stay healthy. And you have Brandon Miller there as well. And PJ Washington looked incredible in his debut, along with Daniel. Daniel Gafford look amazing. They both look amazing, yeah. right? Um, they both dropped double digit points on sixty percent shooting. Gordon Hayward won't be playing till after the All Star break, yeah, because of the injuries and stuff. But yeah, so that's it for the NBA for now. Starting next episode, literally, we'll be recapping the NBA season because we'll be at the All Star break. Uh, NHL, NBA heavy, MLB will be starting up starting soon. Starting soon, yeah. So let's get into the MLB very quickly. Um, spring training has begun. Any signings, any trades like no, that? No, don't uh, double check. So I didn't see anything. while you check, Blake Snell, still a free agent. Matt Chapman, still a free agent. Cody Bellinger, still a free agent. Whit Merrifield, still a free agent. <laughs> so oh, you name it, they're a free agent. Yeah, basically. so it's weird because we're literally less than a week away from spring training. So we'll see how it goes. Uh, check out our Blue Jays rant we went on. We dropped that video as well. Appreciate the support on that. But yeah, check that out to see our reaction, especially if you're a Blue Jays fan of what we think of why they're the biggest loser of this offseason. Yeah, just mini signings, really. Not Nothing of notable names? Nothing notable. Um, Obviously, the Blue Jays signed Yeriel Rodriguez, which Official was now. It's five-year, $32 million contract. What do you think these guys will sign for now if you if you were to guess honestly this way it's gonna be it's, like, it can't be long term now can it it's gonna be like one or two years with like options an option and probably like a lot of money it still could be like you know 20 like what Bellinger signed for one year 20 right yeah like it could still be 20 so million you might get one year 25 yeah he can but yeah. it's gonna be one year so I feel like he'll stay with the Cubs at this point yeah if it's a one year contract he's staying with the Cubs but if you're the Jays if it's one year go do but I don't know I mean, I feel like just at this rate like you know they're probably gonna see spring training you know whatever teams feel like they might be a little bit shit than they think they are. They're like, oh, yeah, screw it. Bellinger's still there. We'll get him. Snell's yeah. still there. We'll get Snell him. Snell is the biggest surprise for me. Yeah, that is That's the biggest surprise for me. He's a Cyan winner. Yeah. Right? Like, Robbie Ray got signed. Yeah. Right? And he got traded. <laughs> yeah, no, but like, Robbie Ray got signed when he won the Cyan. Yeah, exactly. And then Snell's a... Be- that Snell. one's a little bit different story, though, because the whole um, strike thing was in place, I believe. That was no, no, but, but Robbie Ray got signed. Yeah, I know, the point I, is, I know what you're saying. Snell has a better yeah. track record than Robbie Ray. Exactly. Yeah. So, yeah, no, we'll see how that goes. But, yeah, so that's the baseball side of things. Um, Very quickly, uh, Haney Garcia, official. Yeah, I'm monster pumped fight. for that fight. Monster so fight. So pumped. Monster fight. Shout out to both of those guys. Those guys will fight anybody at this point. Haney fought Conbosis twice. He fought Lomachenko. He fought Regis Progress. Now, and then Garcia... Worked his ass off to get the tank fight. Worked his ass off. Kind of backtracked a little bit when he talked to Mayweather, but still went back and made a, figured it out with Haney because Haney complained that he did not get the offer he wanted. Garcia's like, all right, give me a minute, man. Then we'll do this. It's official. It's actually announced. I think it's signed. Obviously, we're not going to know tail fight day if they actually step it's in the boxing. ring. It's boxing. I'm never convinced. but Yeah, because of what happened to Tyson Fury. I'm excited. So... It's not yeah. even that. Because that one is like injury. I'm talking about just like the Spence and what we went through with Spence and Crawford. Oh that, yeah, that was a different story. Like Tyson Fury got hurt. Yeah, you can't. That's what I'm saying. I, I'm not gonna yeah. see, believe it till I see it in the. Yeah, room. yeah, that's for sure. Like, I think this is signed and announced. I think yeah, Spence yeah. and Crawford was never announced until they was announced. Yeah. So, like officially announced. Yeah. But, okay, so that's that side of things. UFC's this weekend. We'll talk about it later, um, as well. Again, check out the Nick Baldwin, uh, episode. We talk a lot about this upcoming card a little bit with Volkanovski and Taporia. Um, let's get right into soccer. Shout out once again. For the fifth time or whatever. We have to keep doing it. Jeevan Badwell, our cousin, our first ever guest. We have to give him another shout out. Uh, recently signed with the Whitecaps 2 professional team. Made his, uh, well, he was on the bench. He was called up for the Champions League game that they should have won, but didn't. Ended up tying Tigres. And now they have to go to Mexico to try to win that game. Um, as Was on the U-17 World Cup squad. Is now called up for the U-20 qualifiers for Team Canada along with a couple of his teammates from the U-17, I think his goalie, Abraham. Yeah. Um, Bialo, Lazar, Stefanovic, are the couple of names I've recognized. 
Um, surprise teacher Tahid wasn't on that one, but so this qualifier is just similar to the the actual men's senior qualifiers. They have to go through a qualifying process to go to the ocho. Oh, so uh, except they don't have an ocho. It is a little bit different. Yeah, yeah. Because they have six. So they have, that they have like a two step thing, right? They so have to go through a two step thing. They have yeah. Trinidad Tobago. They have Dominica, and they have some other club. I forgot. It starts literally in a couple of weeks. So once again, shout out Jeevan, congratulations. Um, at this point, we're gonna. Right, be you're coming home and leaving again. And at this point, <laughs> we're gonna be congratulations like every week. I so, mean. uh, yeah, no, but no, shout out to you. Uh, once again, so keep killing it. We'll keep rooting from afar, and then when Joven sees you again, he'll deal with you in person. <laughs> we'll start playing probably like video games after. Exactly. So, yeah, uh, sticking with soccer though, and do you want to go with the Champions League or do you want to go with the other story first? We'll start off with the Champions League. So, uh, Ch- Champions League is back. Uh, well, maybe by the time this comes out, it's already started or done. But or it's back. Yeah. And so. we'll, we'll do our predictions. We have to do it at this point because it's the f- knockout stages. Okay. Uh, let's uh, look through them, I guess. Uh, predictions. So, the first one is uh, Re- uh, Red Bull Leipzig versus Real Madrid. What's your aggregate score? Oh, uh, I don't know. Obviously, uh, Madrid wins. Madrid wins. Uh, let's go with a 5-3. You're giving Leipzig three goals. Uh, sure. They might just like sneak some three in. Like that Schalke from back then? Yeah. It's, it's me convinced. It'll be like late goals. Okay. I'm going I'm going Madrid with like a 4-1, 5-1. Yeah, Five. that's true. Uh, City Copenhagen. Copenhagen is going to lose. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm giving like City like 7 nothing aggregate. Uh, yeah. Co- yeah. There's nothing else to say about that. Again, I'm not intrigued with the matchups fully as a, like sometimes we were in the past, but All right, Bayern so Munich Lazio, is this upset potential for you? Yes, because Bayern was pretty dreadful recently, right? And uh, the Bundesliga is supposed to be probably the biggest farmers league, right? Next no. to the next to the league on. Yeah. They're both tied equally in my opinion because the fact that Bayern won the last 10 years. Uh they've been dreadful, right? And uh Lazio, they're always decent. So it's upset potential, but I'm still going with Bayern Munich winning. Yeah, I'm going to go like 3-1 aggregate. Yeah, that's fair. I'll say like 3-4-1 still. Uh, PSG Real Susida. This is a tough one to predict as well. Uh, that's a tough one. PSG always choke. How is Susida though? Susida's decent, right? They're like they're like Lazio in my opinion. They're just yeah. decent. They're always there. But I think PSG... They're should. seventh right now in the league. Yeah, PSG... But I think PSG should take it out. PSG should take it. Uh, yeah, I would say similar scoreline there as well. Dortmund PSV... Who you got? I got Dortmund. Same. I got Dortmund. I got well. Dortmund. I'm going with the favorites here. Probably the next one is the probably the most toughest one. It is Inter Milan and Atletico Madrid. How is Inter in the league right now? Inter is like in the top. They're like the top, bro. And then Atletico is like top two or three. Bro, Inter is... Yeah, Inter is top. They're up by like seven points. Um, give me Atletico. I'll go upset here if that's the case. I'm going with Inter. I'm going with Atletico. Um, by like, there's no away goals, right? So I'll, I'm gonna go penalties in this. Let's just let's go let's go crazy. I'm gonna go penalties. Atletico takes it. Yeah, I'm going with Inter. Um, last year's finalists, right? Um, they've been better, legit. <laughs> like they've they've been on top. They've been controlling the Serie A. All and right, they're seven points ahead with a game in hand. Let's go Arsenal Porto, and then we'll end off with the big one. Uh, Arsenal Porto is gonna be Arsenal. Arsenal. Um, yeah, they should have it. They should have it in the bag. Arsenal. Yeah, they're not great in the European competitions. Yeah, I know. Because last year they lost to Sporting CP in the Europa League, right? But that so was a Europa League, and this is now the Champions League. Yeah, I know. So the, the 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 thing is that um, uh, it's a bigger stage, so they might be more shit, or not. Who knows? But yeah, Arsenal should have it though. I'm not convinced. Am I a little bit scared? Yes, I'm a little bit worried. But Arsenal should have it. Um, okay, Barcelona Napoli. I at the beginning of the year, just a reminder, I said Barcelona wins it all. I think I said it with Peter Galindo. Yeah. Right. I'm still sticking Barcelona. They've been struggling really bad recently, though. But I'll st- I'll give them the edge. I'm gonna go. I'll go like a like a one nothing. Yeah, I mean both of them. I'm giving him, I'm giving Barcelona one. Both nothing. teams have been very bad compared to last year. Yeah, right. Like Napoli has been dreadful themselves compared to what they did last year winning the league, and Barca they've been choking. Uh, legit, they haven't been the same. Like to the point that Xavi's like, I'm gonna become a keck. <laughs> so, ah, uh, I don't know. This is a tough one. You're a Napoli boy. 
I'm a Napoli boy. Oh, I do like Napoli. Be motivated because he lost the, n- n- with the Afcon. Nigeria lost the Afcon, by the way. Yeah. So. Uh, congrats to Ivory Coast. And I've, Coast Napoli had boy. a great run last year. They had a good run last year, but they were actually good last year. Yeah. <laughs> that's the thing. Yeah, because they lost uh, Kim and Jay, right? Yeah, they lost him as well. Yeah, that's that's big loss. Uh, I'll go with Barca still. I'm going one nothing. I'll give him, give me the measly one nothing. Yeah, I'll give him, I'll give him a. Le, like three Yamal two. is killing it. I'll give him a three two. Yamal is killing it. Yeah. Yeah. So that's our quick fire, rapid fire predictions. We'll probably cover it a little bit more uh, as the games go on. But the story of the weekend was this thing that they're gonna introduce. So remember how me and you were talking about what they're going to do with the time wasting and all that stuff. Yeah. And we said it might, it's best to probably do a running clock or a stop or clock. Sorry, like stop clock or whatever, how you want to do it. Yeah. They decided to go a different route that I've seen that they were going to talk about it, but now it got delayed, but they're saying that they're going to introduce blue cards. And I don't know if this takes away red cards completely the way they're describing it. And there'll be cinnamon trials, AKA penalty box. Yeah. Which is something we do in our three soccer league. Yeah, um, that's different. That's, that's wreck. Big. That's yeah. just for fun, you know. So high profile trials <laughs> of referees using a blue card to signal ten minutes the sin bin could take place as soon as the summer. The initiative was approved by the sports lawmaking body, the International Football Association Board, aka IFAB, and will be officially announced on Friday. This was four days ago, though, so last Friday, according to Ramsby. The punishment would occur when a player commits a cynical foul. So, does that mean like a red card foul? A tactical foul. Okay, that's what like that is? stopping a counterattack, I think. Okay. Or show dissent like, to the ref. I'm assuming time wasting might be a thing. So, two blue cards would result in a red card and dismissal, as would one blue card and one yellow card. One blue card and one yellow card is a... That's a red card, too? Yeah. Okay. Uh, cinnamon trials have been held in... Uh, already been held in amateur and youth football in England and Wales. Stupid. Uh, FIFA, however, called Thursday's reports incorrect and premature, though. Okay? So, that's essentially what this is. Sin bins won't be introduced in the Euros this year or next season's Champions League. Even if the trial is deemed successful, the new rules can't be part of the FIFA sports official laws until 2026 and 2027. It's just the dumbest thing I ever heard in my life in soccer. Yes. Because I was called stupid once I suggested... You know the night league rules in Surrey. Then we have the night league rules where if it's a tie game, like you just don't end in a tie. Yeah. And I was considered like that's not the traditional yeah. thing, whatever. And, uh, At I least that made more sense than this. That that logic behind. Yeah. It, right. You don't touch the best game in the world. You you just don't touch it. Yeah. It's the best game in the world for a reason, right? Um, soccer is slash football is the best sport it's in the, biggest the world. Sport. It's the biggest sport in the world. Nothing comes close to it. Yeah. Right. These Americans trying to argue Super Bowl? I'm sorry, you're wrong. Yeah. As good as the Super Bowl is... You're wrong. <laughs> this is a worldwide sport. <laughs> this is full-on worldwide. I don't, I don't think people in Peru give a shit about the Super Bowl. Yeah. Right? Compared to the World Cup, which is also worth, like, three times more than the Super Bowl trophy yeah. itself. Uh, soccer is the best sport yeah. in the game. You don't touch it. Right? It, beca- it, it became the best sport in the game for what it is. You just simply don't touch it. Like, I don't see, like, I was holding back and suggesting the time-wasting rules. The only reason I suggested it because the refs were, like, you know. Atrocious. Atrocious. <laughs> Sin bins. I'm not watching hockey. That, exactly. I'm not watching hockey. Like, what it I is. I don't even think field hockey does that. <laughs> yeah, like, I'm not watching hockey. Like, what are you trying to do? It's, yeah. It's, it's so stupid. And even if you do have it, I think 10 minutes is too long, too. I think. Yeah. I think five minutes is better, personally. But I think not having it at all is amazing is this your way of saying to stop time wasting and all that tactical fouls are part of the game bro you have to start up a counter attack like you're not gonna let the team score you simply you get the yellow card you know it right like you you gotta be smart right like if i already have a yellow i can't tactical foul yeah whereas you as my teammate can do it yeah right so and you need the stupidest part from what i saw goalies either need to be subbed out like it's a red card or a player needs to go in net for the goalie. Yeah, that's stupid. It's yeah. stupid. Um, yeah. Um, I hope there's a lot of backlash. Obviously, I'm not saying go like I, violent. Like, there's nothing. Like I always try. To, I always like to look at both sides. Always, always, we always do devil's advocate. Where you, yeah, yeah. Where you always start. I have nothing. To there's sport. nothing. I have nothing. I for it. Have, the only there's thing no, is like there's nothing I like about it. Are you gonna prevent? Really prevent? Like, is this really gonna prevent players? 
sure. But like a guy like Casemiro who just gets a yellow for touching someone, like what are you gonna do? Like at that? the end of the day, it's a rest call. Yeah, he might just whip out a blue card because exactly. he wants to. Yeah, he has a, a lot of power, right? Like yeah. you literally say it's a yellow, and you get a yellow in return, you're gonna get a blue card. So, and then like in big game, like you're talking about World Cup finals gonna be decided by eleven Ma- or ten. Like imagine a freaking uh, um, so like Mbappe scored the penalty right to tie. Yeah. Um, to tie it up, right? The second. The the in the extra time. Yeah. Imagine that yellow card. Uh, the handball was given a blue card. Yeah. France had an eleven on ten exactly. or a ten on nine, whatever, without the goalies. So yeah. yeah, it's bullshit. I have nothing legit. I like from a guy who likes looking at both sides. You know, try to pick out the positive, right? I have nothing. I I legit. I can't I find can't, one. I can't. At least the my me saying, and that was just saying it just cause of it. There's logic that you want to always see a winner, right? Even hockey fans hate the shootout. <laughs> they want like either ten minute overtime and then just end it as a tie. The at least the stopwatch thing makes sense because it, it's still everything is normal. It's just like yeah, you you timing you're is you're just wasting yeah. you're stopping the wasting time thing. Yeah, yeah, this one makes no sense to me. I, I, know. I, I don't get it. But like at the end of the day, wasting time, tactical fouls, all this shit is part of the game. This yeah. is all this is, we like this. We watch it, right? Do we get? It's what brings emotion out of us, right? Yeah. Like we're us as United fans, we we see a lot of our team, like all the time. We're always losing. Yeah. So obviously we're gonna get pissed off when the other teams time wasting. It's part of the game. The emotion. Yeah. It's emotion that brings 100%. us. Even when we played, it was the same thing. And even at the same time, we're for yeah. winning. The odd occasion, United are winning. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, they're winning now. Yeah, they are winning. Um, we're like, okay, yeah. How the hell is it six minutes out of time? Like, and it was the last game. How the hell is it nine minutes and all this stuff, right? It it brings an emotion out of you. Yeah. But yeah, we'll, we'll keep that there for right now. We'll see how it progresses. Uh, definitely the stupidest thing I ever heard, for sure. But let's move on to the biggest story, which we probably should have talked about earlier, honestly. Uh, the NHL. And the biggest story is Morgan Riley. So essentially, if you guys did not see, uh, Ridley Grieg slap shot it into an empty net. Morgan Riley cross checked him in the head. Now has an in person hearing, which I'm surprised we didn't have any news on that yet. So, which means it's probably five-plus game suspension, which is rightfully deserved. Created a lot of backlash on social media. Some of them stupid as hell. Some of them logic. Some of them led to racist comments to Satyar Shah for some reason, which is pretty stupid. We'll mm. probably have a different... That's a different discussion about racism in sports or something. Overall, this is my thoughts, then I'll let you go. I'm fine with really Greek doing that. I think it's stupid that he did it, but I'm fine with it because, you know, it's a rivalry game. You want to stir up emotions. I'm perfectly fine... If Morgan Riley had a problem with it and he went after him, but not the way he did, right? Yeah. Um, for me, it's like, okay, you're, I know you're going to bring this topic up, so I'll let you expand on it, but I'll mention it right now. It's like, okay, if you have an issue with it, go win the game. Then you would not see that problem. I'll let you expand on that in a second. But like, let's just talk about like, let's talk about the facts of what happened. Should he have slap shot it in the net? Sh- sure. What? No. Should, right? Yeah. Okay. The thing That's is, that's one thing that's stupid. But guess what? The puck is going in the net. You're not gonna. It's not like basketball where you just shoot on an empty layup. He just put it in. He was emotional. He he was emo, it was full of emotion. Fired up. You're at home. Uh, obviously, since it's in Ottawa, Toronto fans are gonna um, uh, travel towards. You Canadian know the biggest Fire thing Center. is, right? Ottawa sucks. Yeah. Of course, they're gonna be happy when they win because they never do. Exactly. Especially against a division rival who's yeah. struggling. And at the same time, right? Like you're scoring no matter what happens. Yeah. Right. Unless you're the guy in Dallas. I forgot the guy's name. Who just overskated? Oh, Patrick Stefan. How Patrick did you not Stephon. forget him? The guy who got us the Sedines. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so Pat, unless you're Patrick, he's not Patrick Stefan. Uh, the thing is this you're the Maple Leafs. You're supposed to be good. Why yeah, are you no. losing the Senators in the first place? That's a, that's issue number one. Number two, um, do I have any issue with slap shotting? No. Could he have. What's stopping him? Should he have not slap shot it? Sure. But what's stopping him to slap shot it? Yeah. Right? You gave the guy an empty net breakaway. That's on you. Yeah. That's not on him. He could score half the hell he wants. If, if he laid down and scored with his head, no issue with it. Thomas Drown said it perfectly. He had no issues with the shot. He had no issues with Morgan Riley going after someone. But it's just the way Morgan Riley went Drop after. the gloves. Why are you yeah. whacking your stick around? Like talk shit, poke It's a weapon. Around. At the end of the day, it's a weapon. Yeah. Do it like a bunda. Yeah. Right? Do it like a man. And, the, and drop the, your gloves. To your point, people are saying that, oh, this is, this is not going to make the Leafs soft anymore. How in the world are nah, you? you, did, you did. How is that make you strong and not soft when you cross check a guy to the head yeah. after a game? Nah, you you could have not been not soft during the game then? Bro, you did it like a dipshit. 
as simple as that. Yeah. Right. I would say much more aggressive words, but I'm not going to. But yeah. he did it like you know, he didn't do it like a match. A sucker punch. All right. He he did it. Like he did a sucker punch. Yeah. He did some WWE backstage attack. Yeah. That's what he did. Right. Turn the guy around, drop the gloves, and start attacking him. Now here's the more stupid things to it. Yeah, you could agree that maybe Ridley Greig was stupid for doing that. You could agree Morgan Riley was stupid, or well, Morgan Riley was definitely stupid for doing what he did. Right. Again. Exactly what we see on TV. I would have no issues if that's what happened after the yeah, game. Full on line brawl, proper scum, you know. Yeah. Like we see like Calgary, but Vancouver, here's the thing. Tortorella going to what's other teams' Toronto, locker room type of shit. What's Toronto's biggest issue right now? This they have no defense. Who's their best defenseman? The guy who cross checked the guy in the Just head. Say the name. <laughs> Morgan Riley. And now you're gonna lose him for you know. He, now that's st- stupid number one, <laughs> right? Your best, you are the best defender. You know that's the biggest issue. Your goaltending has been suspect all year. As as much of a comeback, so Samson Nov has been making yeah. Martin Jones held it down a little bit. And who's the other guy? Joseph Wall. Yeah, like he's been like decent, but he's been injured, right? But either way, you got suspect goaltending. You don't know what you're gonna get. You're the only thing that's holding that defense down at the moment. And now you're gone for six, five, seven games. You're barely holding on. Like you're not by far and away a top two team like you were last year in the, in oh, the yeah, no way no way no right way. or top three i guess like the the east so, last year was like locked in the, so that's the, stupidity number one that you could fall out of a playoff race with this potentially with how bad your defense has been so you're putting pressure on your forwards for that stupidity number two comment sheldon keeve and i get it his job is probably on the line i won't be surprised if he gets fired soon if not off season for sure yeah says that your player has every right to react which is true but not in this case. And not, not in the way he did. Not in the way he did. React. Don't get me wrong. React. I would react too. Yeah. I'll be pissed off. We're not being mad at you being pissed off. We're being mad at you being a As, an uh, idiot. You're being... The way you did it, you did it like an idiot. Yeah. Even the fact that you're going to respond, you're going to react isn't because you did a slap shot. You're just reacting because you're losing the game. Yeah. Let's be real. You're not reacting because he slap shot that in the net. Yeah, no, it, okay, what what rule is telling you that you shouldn't slap? Yeah, I hate the unwritten Un- rule. Unwritten bullshit. rule. Man, your, your, your job is to freaking score a goal, right? You score a goal however you want to score. If Rid- Ridley Greig thought slap shotting the puck into an empty net was the best way to score a goal, which uh, probably wasn't, he scored a goal. Yeah. Right? We'll be memeing Ridley Greig if he didn't score a goal. Even if it was like eight seconds left, whatever, yeah. how much. I know it was like around like that time, right? right? I'll be pissed off if Ridley Greig didn't score. Because, yeah, uh, yeah why I not? Next time someone just goes like the takes a stick, flips it on the upside, and hits with a knob. Well, I, I <laughs> swear, I want someone to freaking yeah. go on the ground and head it in. Ha- uh, it use their ha- helmet. Yeah. Or take their helmet off and just use the helmet to score. Yeah. Like, oh, well, that's a penalty. Oh, well, yeah, that is. <laughs> but don't kick it in. Don't, don't kick yeah. it in. <laughs> um, no. Uh, overall thoughts, though, listen, a lot of things could be right. I'm fine with him doing that. I'm fine with a reaction, but not that reaction. And now you got your coach making stupid comments because he's stressed. He's probably saying that because he's calling Morgan Riley an idiot. Morgan Riley's an idiot for doing that because you're literally not just because you did that, because you're their best defenseman. The fan base of Toronto is stupid because listening to Halford and Bruff in the morning, Laddie, who's the producer, who, who is from Hamilton, a big Jays fan, those same Leafs fans that are Jays fans, uh, they had issues with Rofen at door doing what he did to Bautista, says they have no issues with this. How does that make sense? They don't. You, get, Your issue, you, have, no, you, have, you have issues with Odor doing that to Bautista. Yeah, you got... That's fair. You should have issues with that. Yeah, you, uh, you got fully decked in the head. Listen, right? we're a new. We're speaking from a neutral yeah. fans perspective. Like, here. if that was the Canucks, I would have wanted the Canucks to go after him for sure, but yeah. not that way he did. Like, if like, if you're telling me like freaking Quinn Hughes full on, you know, uses stick as a baseball bat basically, and sw- we would have been here saying that's stupid. I'm like, what the hell is wrong with you? I would take your Norris kind of city away. Yeah, I would. I would done that for Quinn Hughes. Exactly. Right. I'll be pissed off. Would I be pissed off if Quinn Hughes dropped the gloves? No. Well, I'll be like, you shouldn't because, like, you're a best player. Like, please don't drop the gloves. Yeah. But, yeah, no, like, the thing is this. Like, if it's a different story if you're, like, you know, one of the role players, right? You're one of the top players on Leafs. Yeah, if Ryan, Ryan Reeves did it. Ryan's just stupid ass and yeah. like, he has no problems with it. We had to bring hockey violin to get Yeah, uh, okay, yeah, <laughs> well, that's, well, that's Ryan, Reeves, that's Ryan Reeves, yeah. Yeah. Uh, like, what has he done? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all he, that's all he done, being violent. Yeah. Like, if it was Ryan Reeves going after him, you know, which, who should be the guy going after him? Right, it's a different story, but no matter what it is, you can't use your stick, right? Yeah. The stick is a weapon, right? Like, that is a weapon, the stick. Yeah. You can't use your stick like that, right? Exactly. Legit. Like, you gotta fight like a man, right? Turn him around, drop the gloves, start going after him, you know, start tugging him, whatever it is. Yeah. Right. Do whatever you want, put your hands on him, but don't use a stick while he's, um, uh, what is he? When his back is turned to you. Exactly. Right. Don't be that guy. Exactly. 
Um, speaking of which, the a little bit lighter subject, but it still ties to this. Oh, I forgot his name. Zadorov. No. Uh, well, he did get two game suspension, which yeah. I disagree with. I'm talking about the gritty after the shoot or penalty shot. Oh. What's his name again? Jake Wallman. Yeah, Wallman. So he does the people are saying that you know BX obviously hated as a former Canuck, but like Canucks fa- um, fans were pissed that like you know because it was a penalty shot they couldn't really get on the ice and beat him up or <laughs> whatever the case may be. Do you have an issue with that he grittied after the game, or uh, that he grittied after scoring a goal, especially in overtime like that? Um, even though it was a questionable penalty shot in the first place, but what I'm saying is like, are you fine? I know we're gonna have some bias to it. That he grittied after the game. That Canucks, I went from the Canucks should have came and like showed him up. I mean, okay, one you can't really do it because it was a penalty shot. Well, I'm saying in general, bench. let's just say it was on ice, like a regular three on three, five on five moment. Reason why I don't have an issue with Wallman doing it because he did it before. I don't know. He, okay. he he did it before. Take that to the side too. Yeah, no. Um, I don't. I really don't. I don't have an issue. I, I don't. I'm crazy don't. for saying that. I'm, I'm because not. I'm like it's a celebration. Let them yeah. have fun. They won. You sucked. Yeah, did, Canucks. If, if, you if, blew a three-one lead in that game. If someone from the Canucks, I don't know, Ian Cole comes out again. I know that's a penalty shot, but let's just pretend that was like a normal breakaway or something, or like just a regular goal, whether it be overtime or five on five or four on four, whatever the case may be. I would have had no issue if he went after him. Yeah, yeah. Odai, but he's celebrating. In, in terms of celebrations, like. It's a celebration. I'm fine with it. It's Soccer is people gritty all the time. Like, did he slap? They did a dab and everything. Yeah, like it's a celebration. Yeah, he, sc- he scored a goal. Yeah, it's a different story if he just, you know, if uh, Dylan Larkin, who's on the bench, right, when Jake Wallman scores, like a penalty shot, comes off and starts gritting in front of your bench. That's a different story. Yeah, Wallman's that's different. This was a win. Wallman scored. If you score a goal in any sport, you score, right? You have the right to celebrate, even if in basketball. Issue, yeah. I would have had an I wouldn't had a much of an issue, but if it was home ice, if it, they were away, so if the Canucks were home, then I would have been like, someone get on the ice, like this guy's doing that in front I of the crowd. I think he did it away too once. Yeah, Wallman, when he scored. But I'm saying I'm talking about this specific yeah. situation, right? This was home. Yeah, no, I no. personally, in general, I, I like seeing celebrations. I don't have no issue with it. I like seeing celebrations because people are saying that oh, well, you know, Canucks are gonna have their revenge on Thursday, which fine, fair, well, fine, it's fair, whatever. It's motivation. Yeah, it's, it's motivation. So that's fair. That's all part of the game. Yeah. Right. You use it as motivation, beat the shit out of him on Thursday, and uh, you got your revenge. Yeah. What's the point of beating him up? You but got, yeah, you got that's one lucky. P- one Morgan lucky Riley, penalty shot. You're goal, stupid. Yeah. You probably got like five, six games for your first ever suspension, probably, and you put your team. Oh, you're lucky. First trouble. ever. If it's your second, bro, you're getting like ten plus. Probably. Yeah. But yeah, uh, and you, he hasn't been like borderline. Yeah, like that's how true. sometimes yeah, get, yeah, like yeah. Tom Wilson used to be before he got the twenty gamer. Yeah, but yeah, no, uh, that wraps it up here. Once again, uh, appreciate everybody for watching. Once again, appreciate everybody, and thank you everybody once again for four hundred subscribers. Road to five hundred. to YouTube partnership begins already began, but begins officially now. So make sure you guys like, comment, and subscribe. Uh, rate, review, and download on any audio platforms you guys use. And uh, follow our socials link down below. We're back to uploading, um, posting YouTube, sh- or sorry, TikTok videos, YouTube shorts, and Instagram reels, such as clips from the pod, um, TikTok, cha- like those challenge videos, those draft challenges, guess the players, name the player, whatever, and guess the team, all that. But once again, appreciate you guys once again, and we'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace. Peace.